Alright, last video of this project, we finally got to take this thing for its first actual test drive, which was awesome. Huge thanks to Brian for letting us bring this thing out to his property. Hopefully we can do that again soon. Now, everything was working great on this thing, except for the engine. The engine was definitely having some issues. Not only was it overheating, I don't think it was getting proper fuel, and I also don't think the oil pump is working properly on this thing, unfortunately. So we're hopefully going to address and fix all that in this video and hopefully get this thing running a lot better. Now, first thing let's address is the overheating. I definitely think the radiator needs a fan as well as a, a radiator fan shroud because when I'm sitting in this thing, I, I think I'm blocking all the airflow getting to this radiator as well as we're not really driving this thing that fast. So yeah, I think this thing definitely needs a radiator fan and a radiator fan shroud. Now, we also need to address something with the water pump. Now, because we have to address something with the water pump, we have to drain the coolant for that, and it's gonna be a lot easier to build the radiator fan shroud with the radiator off. So let's drain the coolant, so therefore we can take the radiator off. This is probably gonna make a huge mess, but I can't think of a better way to do this. This may be a bad idea. Ah, it's mostly been enough for. Ah, crap. <sighs> well, I didn't think about that. Well, the problem with having really close and tight clearances with everything is once you add more stuff, then stuff is in the way. So yeah, now this is hitting the CBT cover. So if I have the bottom on the inside of the tabs instead of the outside, it kind of fits, but let me just... Let me grind down this just a little bit and make a little bit more space. Oh, oh, oh. 
Now, before we hook up the radiator again, we need to address something with this water pump on this engine. Now, I will admit, last video of this project, we kind of overheated the crap out of this little poor engine, which is horrible, I know, but at least we got really good footage. Now, I looked up on Google, apparently these engines are supposed to run anywhere from 120 to 135 Fahrenheit, and I know that Google says that 180 degrees Fahrenheit is overheating for this engine. We got this little thing up to 207, if I remember correctly. It was over a little over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which I will admit is not great for this engine, I know. But I did do a compression test on this thing. It is still good, which is awesome. It still has good compression. It's not as great as it should be, this being a freshly rebuilt engine, but at least it still has good compression. These two cylinders were 135, this one was 140, so there's plenty enough compression to still run this thing, but it's not as great as it should be, being re freshly rebuilt. But at least we didn't melt any pistons or catastrophically damage anything. But while I was checking the compression on this thing, I fired it up shortly just to make sure it still runs, and when it fired up, the water pump on this thing seized up shortly, and then I got it freed up again, fired it up again, and it seized again. And I can actually take a screwdriver and move around the pulley for the water pump. So I'm kind of thinking our water pump is bad on this thing. Now I'm kind of curious, is that possibly the reason this thing was overheating? Maybe the water pump was bad, not, not being able to circulate water properly. But I, I did find a new water pump on eBay. It was like 115 bucks or something like that. Yeah, that's not good that our water pump seized. At least it didn't uh, seize when we were out there. Or maybe did it. Maybe is that why it's uh, overheating? I, I have no idea. So let's take this cover off. Hopefully I can take the cover off without having to remove the engine because it's kind of a really tight fit in here. But uh, yeah, let's take the cover off and check out the water pump and replace it. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to take the cover off, but at least I can get to the water pump now. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that with the water pump. Yeah, that, uh, that's not good. Also, see all this, uh, all this caked on mud. Can You can kind of tell that uh, this water pump was leaking. Why is it every time I'm working on a radiator, I have to drain the coolant? The coolant just gets all over the place. This thing's covered in coolant. The floor is soaked. Why is it it's so, always such a mess working, you know, having to drain the coolant from anything? Yeah, sounds a bit crunchy. Hmm. So, I really want to be able to take the cover off, so let's cut this tube off. Weld it back on down here, so I just I want to be able to take the cover off. There we go. What in the world is that? See all these white spots? It almost looks like little chunks of ice, but it's not ice. What the heck is this? Is this mold? Some kind of mildew? It's a bunch of white spots all over inside of that. What the heck? Yeah, luckily I was able to find a new water pump. They do look exactly the same, and they are the same size, so. Yeah, this is what it's supposed to sound like. Notice how it's nice and silent. You don't see any play. This one. Yeah, a little bit of play and 
Yeah, sounds a bit crunchy. So, I want to take this thing apart and just see how bad it is. And see if this is maybe the reason why it was overheating. Also, are there any aluminum shavings in the engine that I have to clean out? Yep, they're stuck. Holy crap, those were on there. I had to drill one of them out because that one wouldn't come off. Eh, not, not terrible. Yeah, that's not supposed to do that. So it's actually not as scratched up as I thought it would be. You can definitely see, yeah, it's definitely moving in there. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little scratched up. Yeah, what in the world went wrong with this thing? I mean, it's a little scratched up. You know, this surface is definitely, yeah, it is pretty bad. There's definitely some scratches on there, but I don't see anywhere where it would be like prohibiting coolant from flowing. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I think the ball bearings. Came undone. Here's where all the muddy water came from. Wow. There's some ball bearings right in there. Yeah, I think the bearings just gave out. I mean, as bad as this is, I don't think this is the reason for overheating. I mean, if this, if this did lock up when we were test driving it in the last video, we would have heard it. We would have felt it, the belt would have been smoking, would have been making noise, would have been hard to start. So I don't think this is the reason for overheating, but I definitely think, yeah, this is uh, definitely, definitely didn't help. So now that I'm seeing this, now that I'm seeing all this aluminum that uh, is definitely scratched up, I'm wondering if there's any aluminum shavings in the block. Yeah, maybe I'll flush it out before you know, before putting all this stuff back together. So anyway, let me flush out the coolant system. Let's install the new one and then put the coolant system back. So this new belt that I bought doesn't even fit on the pulleys. Look at that. I mean, it's the same length, but it's, it's just a tad bit wider. So here's the old one. See how it sits further into the V-belt pulley. And then here's the new one. Barely fits into it. And I can't even get the water pump on with the belt because it's just, yeah, I, I can, I can't get the, I can't get the water pump on. Yeah, I mean, this belt is not in terrible shape, so, and it fits on there at least. I did end up buying a brand new pulse pump as well, so let's install that. They look pretty similar.
Alright, so hopefully, replacing the pulse pump on this thing will solve the issue we were having last video of this project where, uh, which actually I haven't uploaded that video yet, I upload that and I think about four or five days or something like that. Now, the issue we were having is this thing did not like cornering. Every time I was trying to do a donut, the th it just, it, it felt like it was just running out of fuel because it would bog down heavily and if I was doing it for too long it would just die. So, that, I mean, it kind of makes sense that maybe the pulse pump wasn't working properly because right now this thing is, it can be gravity fed. The gas tank is higher than the carburetor. So, and it was running fine in a straight line and in a straight line, it can gravity feed, but in going around corners, it can't gravity feed. So I'm hoping that replacing the pulse pump will solve that issue because I can't think of any other reason of why it would be bogging down in corners, but running fine in a straight line. Originally, in the moment, I was kind of thinking maybe it's because it's carburetors and carburetors don't like cornering, but it's, and then I'm like, well, no, carburetors, they should work fine in cornering. I mean, snowmobiles corner hard. I think so. Also, I did. Uh, I did. I took. I took apart the original pulse pump, and there was some gunk in the one-way valves that would allow them to not close properly. So maybe that's why. Yeah. Hopefully, now that uh, we replace that, it'll solve that issue. Now, another thing I will be doing is something you guys have been telling me ever since I started working on this project, and that is I will be deleting the oil injection on this thing because if you actually watch the footage. And again, I haven't uploaded this video yet, so I haven't read any of the comments you guys have been uh, saying on that video. This thing com completely stopped smoking towards the end of test driving this thing. And that's kind of a miracle that it still has good compression. Now, the reason it was smoking you know, in the beginning of the video is I still had the, the pre-mixed gas in the gas tank. And when we were trying to do a donut with this thing, it was bogging down. We were kind of thinking like maybe it's just not enough gas in the gas tank. So therefore I filled the gas tank up almost all the way with normal gas. And then after I did that, it kind of completely stopped smoking. So, which is not good. Definitely not good. So I will be deleting the oil injection on this thing. I don't think the pump is working. I do not want to blow this. I mean, th there is a possibility that maybe it was just running so hot that it was burning the oil and you could just not really see it. But it's like, if you watch the footage of driving this thing through the woods, it is not, you, it is not smoking even the littlest bit. So, uh, it is kind of, again, it's kind of a miracle that uh, I did not blow this motor up. So I will be deleting the oil injection. I don't trust it. I don't want to blow this motor up. And I guess from now on, I will just run premix gas in this thing. I don't know. I mean, there's a possibility it was working and was getting proper lubrication, and maybe it was just because it was running hot, you couldn't see the smoke. But I don't know. After after seeing the footage of this thing in the woods and it was not smoking at all, I just I don't trust this oil pump anymore. Let's just delete it and run premix. There's no oil leaking from these oil lines. There's a little bit of oil in this one, but uh, so far this one that went to the PTO bearing, a little bit of oil dripped out of that when I took it off. This one didn't drip at all. This one didn't drip at all. Let's see if any oil comes off of this one. <laughs> yeah, no oil is, uh, is coming out of these oil lines. <sighs> Whoops! That's not good, that's not good at all. So yeah, our oil pump definitely wasn't doing much. So I've been instructed to grind the teeth off of this and then just put it back and then put a plate over it. So I mean it sounds like it's, it sounds right.
I guess we don't need the oil tank anymore. Now I know doing this is also deleting the oil line going to the PTO bearing or whatever this bearing is called and I know that's not great but I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, what I'm going to do is occasionally I'll just inject some oil into this. So how I'm going to block this stuff off is I don't have any of those vacuum plugs, whatever they're called. So I'm just going to take the lines, go have this connect to the line that goes to this carburetor and connect this carburetor to this carburetor. That way it's kind of like blocking them off, it's just connecting them to each other. So I bought this gas can specifically for this vehicle. This is two gallons. And this is a 40 to 1 mix. Yeah, I'm only mixing two gallons for now, just because I don't need that much. So, so I was just, so this is the tag that came with this gas can. I was, I was just reading it before I was about to throw it away, and I'm like, it's, it's great use for non-potable water, automotive industrial fluids. It says no gas. Are you kidding? This is a, clearly a gas can. Why does it say no gas? Are you kidding me? I wanted this one because the other, those five gallon jug, the red ones, the, the handles, the pour spouts are horrible. These are better, especially for a vehicle like this. This container is solely intended for use with non-fuel or non-kerosene products and must not be used to transport fuel or kerosene. For storage and transport of recyclable automotive fluids, non-potable water, feed attractants and other outdoor products. Really? Really? Well, I already poured gas in here, so I can't return it now. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Wow. So I guess we'll get a good idea on how much gas this tank holds. Because this is two gallons. So it's almost full, but not quite. I think maybe I could put another quarter to third gallon in here. So maybe not quite two and a half gallons. All right, so next thing we need to work on is wiring all this stuff up. Obviously, we need to have power for the radiator fan. Now, a couple videos ago, I installed some headlights and then immediately burned them out. Turns out, this wiring harness is AC only, which I didn't even think about that, so that's why they burned out. So we need to somehow convert it from AC to DC, which all we need to do is install a regulator slash rectifier. I bought this on eBay. This is for a two-stroke engine, because I found a bunch of them for pit bikes that were really cheap. I bought a couple, but then I realized after, like, hang on, a pit bike doesn't rev as much as a two-stroke, so therefore I went back on eBay, bought this one. This is specifically for a two-stroke engine, so therefore I, I want to make sure we don't burn it out. Now, I've been doing a little bit of research on how to hook these things up. I'm pretty sure you need to have this hooked up to a battery in order for this not to burn out. If we're not using the headlights and we're not using the radiator fan, we definitely don't want this thing to burn out. So it's not gonna be that big a deal to install a battery on this thing. So all we gotta figure out is just where to put it and then just wiring this thing up again.
Alright, so I hooked up the battery and the voltage regulator slash rectifier to what I think is the proper wires that we need to... All we're trying to do is just to get it to charge the battery. That's all we're trying to do, so... Right now, battery voltage is 12.7. If I start it up, and if it's any higher, then we know it's working. If it's too high, it's gonna burn the battery out. Hopefully this works. switch not work for turning it on maybe it's not grounded yeah I flipped the switch to turn it off and it and it uh and it didn't shut off so it is working it was pulling about 14 amps and it was getting really hot I mean it's that is definitely really hot so but it was working it was charging it's now at 13 the battery's at 13 and it got up to 14 where before it was 12 so it is charging in theory but it's like man that is that got hot really fast and it's only idling so yeah from the stator it was uh, about I think it was 14 amps so it is working I mean how hot are these things normally get let me go fire up a different vehicle and see if the voltage regulator gets warm with it idling. So I just checked, I fired up the CBR1000, checked to see if that regulator gets hot when idling. It does not. I checked the amperage going into the regulator and it's 9 amps. So this was... What was it? I already, I already forgot how much uh, amperage it was, so I'm going to fire it up again. I'm going to switch the wires around and just kind of see... Does that do anything? Yeah, this gets kind of really hot really fast, which is not a good sign. Not something you want. You know, heat is not your friend with electronics. So right now the battery says 12.8 volts. Let's put this on this wire. Hook it up to that. To that one. I saw a spike of 21 amps. That's uh, that's a lot. The battery says the battery was at 14 volts when it was running, and then it shot up to 14.6, I think, when I revved it up. Now it's at 13. So the battery voltage says 13.1 right now. It should say 12. Battery's not warm. Regulator is definitely warm. So, <sighs> great. So this produces way more amperage than this is set up for. I think. I think at least. Again, I don't know anything about electronics. I'm I'm sh shooting in the dark here. Yes, 16 amps at idle, where the CBR was nine so yeah that's uh it's definitely different so crap all right so i've been doing some research some googling reading some forums and apparently these do get hot and that's just normal it's just a little alarming how hot it's getting at idle 
Now, one thing that's a little weird is I fired up the CBR1000, I measured the amperage going into the regulator rectifier, and it's, uh, what was it? It was 9 amps. This is 15 amps. And that regulator rectifier, I had it run it for two minutes, and it's not getting hot. It's not even warm. And then I fired up my dirt bike, and that regulator's not getting hot at all. I don't have a two-stroke that has a regulator re rectifier that I can test to see, like, the amperage or how hot it's getting. But apparently, according to Google, it is perfectly normal for these to get hot. So, it's, it's kind of a thing of really not going to be able to figure out if it works or not until we just slap it on. And if it breaks, then we know it doesn't work. But if it works, then it works, I guess. So, yeah, let me, uh, but now knowing how hot this gets, uh, now I probably shouldn't put it underneath the battery where I was planning on putting it. I should put it somewhere else, somewhere where it gets good airflow. You guys are right, this is a VW Baja bug. It deserves to have round headlights, not square headlights. So I replaced the ones we broke with round headlights. Should have done that outside. I just wanted to see how well it's running now that I did those changes, and it's running pretty good. All right, so here's where we figure out if this new electrical system works or not. Did that blow the fuse? It did not. Nice. All right, so our new wiring seems to be working. It is charging the battery. The regulator isn't getting as hot as it was originally. Now, basically, I've been, I've been staring at the wiring diagram of the engine that this regulator came from, and I noticed that there was a 25 amp fuse in between the stator and the regulator. So I put a 25 amp fuse in between the stator and the regulator, and my thought is, if this engine is producing more power, more current than this regulator is designed for, 
then it will simply just blow the fuse and we will know that it's that this engine is not designed to be run with a regulator and a battery because because I, I was thinking about that is this a high amperage stator or is it a stator that can be used with the because I I don't know I don't Again, I don't know much about electronics, so for this, for, for me, with this kind of stuff, I kind of have no idea what I'm doing. I'm kind of just trying things and seeing if, it, if they work, and I'm, I'm comparing this to the other red engines I have, and measuring the amperage and voltage coming out of those engines, going into the regulators, and it's half what's coming out of this engine, and those regulators aren't even getting it warm, while this one's getting hot within the first minute of idling, so I'm like, crap, is this not going to work? Is this producing more current? It's actually producing twice the amount of amperage than any other engine I have, but this is a two stroke. Those are four strokes. Does that make a difference? I have no idea, so. But it seems to be working. It didn't blow the fuse when I did that test. Basically my thought is if it's producing more power, then it will simply blow that 25 amp fuse. And if it blows it, then we know that it's not gonna work. If it doesn't blow it, then we know it works, so. Also, I did put in another fuse in between the battery and all the other wiring, the wiring for the fan, the lights and everything, so it has two fuses, so it should be pretty well protected in case anything happens. Now, basically what we got done in this video is we deleted the oil injection, we're now running premixed gas, we replaced the water pump, we replaced the fuel pump, we installed the radiator fan and radiator fan shroud, we installed some new headlights, round headlights this time, as well as completely redid all the wiring on this thing, so hopefully, Hopefully that'll make it to where this thing runs better, runs cooler, doesn't have any overheating issues. I was thinking about install, you know, hooking up the fan to this uh, thermostat, but I decided to hook it up to a, to a switch. So therefore I can just make, you know, keep an eye on the temperatures and if it's getting warm, I'll just flip the switch and turn the radio fan on. But yeah, we won't really know if all this stuff works until we take this thing out again and test drive it. So in a couple weeks, I'll be going to Windrock for the weekend of 4th of July, and I definitely want to bring this thing, so therefore we can drive it. Because every year we go there, we always drive to the prison, and most of the time I bring the Grave Ninja and drive the Grave Ninja out there. But this year, I'm going to bring this thing. I think this will be a lot better. It's got better suspension, better steering, better handling, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, definitely excited to see what this thing will do. Because that's... And that's why I put these uh, ammo cans on the side of this, this thing, because I knew I was going to take it to Winterock, and I definitely didn't want to have any fuel issues, so yeah, these will definitely come in handy. So we will test all this stuff when we're there, hopefully all our fixes actually fix this thing and it doesn't overheat anymore, and runs better, runs cooler, and doesn't have any bogging issues or anything like that. But uh, anyway... Guys, that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.